He's one of the greats of American literature. From cowboy adventures to love stories, Larry McMurtry has brought countless characters vividly to life and his work has powerfully captured the American frontier. And now in his 70s, after a heart attack, quadruple bypass surgery and a bout of deep depression, the writer has focused on his other love, book selling. Larry McMurtry gave a rare television interview to North America correspondent Jane Cowan. A place where you can feel like the only soul alive. That's how Larry McMurtry's described his hometown. Do you have affection for Archer City? Not a lot. I don't. It is undeniably bleak. You should see it in midwinter. It's just as bleak as it is right now. But if Archer City's bleak, it's provided plenty of fodder for a writer's imagination. But I don't want to leave. Why can't I just stay here and go to college in Wichita Falls? Because everything is flat and empty here. But at 75, Larry McMurtry is still here, in a sprawling ranch house filled with books, a virtual graveyard of burnt-out typewriters and reminders of a career he's loath to admit has been brilliant. I'm a minor regional novelist. That's not a bad thing. It's not self-deprecating. Because most writers are not are minor. Lonesome Dove, a story of heroes and outlaws, lovers and ladies. His Pulitzer Prize-winning epic, Lonesome Dove, isn't among the few works of fiction he looks back on happily. A testament to the opening of the American West. It's a phenomenon. It's a very popular book and fine and dandy, but it doesn't stir me, and I haven't cracked it since I wrote the last sentence. If anything defines McMurtry's work more than the American West, it's his penchant for pushing the boundaries. Nowhere more so than in his risque, semi-autobiographical 1966 book, The Last Picture Show, which was turned into a critically acclaimed movie that painted an unflattering portrait of small-town America. A lot of that was pretty risque, and I'm, I'm thinking Larry has a very vivid imagination. Or maybe that happened and I'm just naive. To me. When he made the first picture show, all of the town people, the older people, were just aghast, and they couldn't believe that he'd be saying these things about our little hometown. And for a while, he was persona non grata in Archer City, and he knew it. Mary Webb grew up with McMurtry and runs a bed and breakfast themed around his stories. She keeps his trophies on her mantelpiece. They'll knock on my door, ring the doorbell. Can we see the Oscar? <laughs> so I say, yes, you can see the Oscar. Jack Twist. Yes. The Academy Award is for McMurtry's screenplay of the cowboy romance Brokeback Mountain, which also ruffled feathers. But McMurtry says he doesn't write to shock. I don't think about breaking rules or not breaking rules. It's not my problem. How people react is their problem, and I can't do anything about it. I put the books out there. It's true the people of Archer City haven't always known what to make of the provocateur in their midst. It was in the generation that was contemporary with those works. It was a bit shocking, but... For those of us who've uh, grown up with it, it's, uh, it's like saying, hey, I, I'm living here where Poe walked. I'm living here uh, where, um, uh, you know, Hemingway in Elk Park. These days, you're more likely to find McMurtry pricing books in his bookstore than at his typewriter. His collection, fossicked from all over America and the UK, runs over four blocks in Archer City. We wouldn't have a town if it weren't for him right now. When all the, the mom-and-pop stores went under in the mm, 60s, 70s, I guess, uh, the buildings were all boarded up, and they were just empty buildings. And then when he decided to come back here and make this the hub of his business and bought the buildings and put books in them, well, it gave a, a life to the town again. Every volume has a Coburn photograph in it. McMurtry's love of books is obvious. I mean, it's like, what appeals to you about a woman? 
It's much the same. But the literary giant no longer reads fiction. I haven't read fiction in about 25 or 30 years. I read a huge amount of fiction at one time in my life when I was trying to learn to write it. And then I burned out. Uh, he had one line in there about being so... His legacy, though, is drawing a new generation of writers keen to hone their craft. When I was growing up as a child, my father, instead of write, you know, reading children's bedtime stories, he wrote Lonesome Dove and Dwayne's Depressed and all these novels. With the writing, it's not just words on a page, but it's really the way of life. It's really just totally influenced my writing out here. It may look like just every other little Texas town, but there, there's something here that, that is inspirational. Standing in the main street of Archer City is a surreal feeling. This is the actual movie theatre from the last picture show, and the whole scene does feel very familiar. You almost expect a young Sybil Shepherd to walk around the corner or Jeff Bridges to appear on the street. What you so mad for? I've never done that to you. Well, I guess screwing my girl ain't nothing to you. I ain't screwing her. Hell, you ain't. I screw but Larry McMurtry is happy to leave his characters behind. <laughs> You talk about your writing in some of your memoirs as if you're almost at the end of your fiction. Well, I think I am. I don't think I can write fiction anymore. I may fool myself. If I'm around five years from now, I may write some. But right now, 30 novels is a lot of novels. I don't feel any urge to write fiction. I'll take care of the mercury for you. I'll see you in a year or two if I don't get shot. But you get the feeling Archer City is more than happy to be haunted by his literary ghosts. Jane Cowan, Lateline.